Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here. <laughs> okay, and welcome to the channel. One event I would not miss is this very super final match in this season's battle between the two finest engines. It's against Stockfish 14 against the one and only Leela. The heart we use in this tournament, these games, I'm talking of all 100 of them, will go as fast as lightning. Even though the time controls are set at 120 plus 10. Personally, I don't think Leela is able to put up a strong fight. But do not let me say any more. I'll shut up and cover a few games. I want to look at game 2 of 100. Variable books are used, but do let me cut to the chase. In this game, that has just finished. We have a 12 move opening book. Is it 12? It is. Stockfish 14 went for e4. We have the Sicilian. And with knight f3 and d6, the next moves are all standard. d4 takes, takes, knight f6. Knight c3, Knight c6, Bishop g5, e6, Queen d2, a6, castles, Bishop d7, f3, h6, Bishop e3, b5, g4, and now this knight moved to e5 and the engines are on their own. Does anyone know what we're looking at? It's the Richter Rousey attack, which has elements of the Schreininger, the Knight off, and so forth. Knight e5. Bishop g5 is the Richter Rousey attack, which has been around for years. It's opening you see here, it's considered to be equal. The Knight's presence on e5 is eyeballing this pawn on f3. And with a knight on d4, no engine or human player is concerned with their free right now. Stockfish is more concerned with king safety and to stop any attack or any attacks on the queen side. Also for this standard way to stop b4. Any ideas how Lila responds? She went for it with this offer. When this guy went, a queen went after him. Stockfish now launches this crazy attack and, and what this means is that this board will clear up pretty fast. With this attack, you will be mad not to take. Lila took all right. And now with this bishop backing off to the very first, Lila goes on to eliminate this guy. There are all sorts of moves here. The game of round one, when the engines took the other side, after queen b8, we saw an entirely different game. No f4, but h4. Then b4 appeared, the two pawns were traded. Queen f2, let's rook b8, knight b3, a5, bishop b2, knight c6, bishop d2, queen b7. And the game continued again in a very interesting way, like they do. So game two, if you like, is entirely different. There is queen e2, queen e1, but other moves like knight a2, h3, may also be playable. Knight a2, actually, would be a very bad choice of response. Why? The queens do come off in their wheel once this guy bites the dust. Even after bishop g2, there is this move to cover. If you take and take, Lila would have a very comfortable position even after this knight is attacked. The attack is empty. Knight f6, and Stockfish's position is shite. Coming back, one position we did not consider is this knight move to b3. And this is how Stockfish played it. H5, a very strategic answer. Still got this knight to come under fire. 
One thing I already said is that this game had ended. In fact, it is not. I'm a few words behind, but I can see where this game is going. Nothing concrete, but the signs are there. With Lila having got stuck on one particular move, and we're getting to come to it. But right now, at this very point, Lila is trying to figure out a move after 29 plus minutes. To be exact, it was 29 minutes and 47 seconds and this move has just been played. How deep are these calculations that warrant a move to take that long? Coming back to the very aim, H5 was in anticipation of a likely attack on this knight. And with this materialising, Lila was just in time to save him. And this is what she did. Bishop d4 chasing now after this knight. And guess what? Not e5. Not bishop e7, which looks more human, but something else. Oops. Apologies all. I'm messing things up. Lila did introduce the bishop, and right away Stockfish gets his move going. A5 led to this guy to drop. So why did Leela just drop this pawn? The reason for allowing this guy to go was all due to this incoming pawn attack on the queen's side. You know, engine games are not just difficult, but they are impossible. There is a type of trick here, but many of us will miss it. Stop for chat, probably everything calculated. He came in with this forcing move. The queens had to come off. And this is a point where Lila freezes. And at the same time, allowing me in a way to catch up with the actual game. If we can imagine a human taking half an hour single move, and we do have those situations, when it comes to engines that are able to calculate millions of combos in seconds, how many of them did Leela calculate? That she needed nearly half an hour for a single move. Actually, it wasn't here where that incident took place. But after A3 and B takes, it was here. I guess Leela was trying to work out whether to push on with D5 or chase after the rook. If at any time knight c7 materializes, all you get is a check that after king f8, knight takes and king takes, this is not what Lila was trying to work out, but instead the deep implications that follow. In the end, Lila chases after the rook. Stockfish retreats him here. And now came this move to d5. It's weird to take so long to think if one move needs to be played before the other, especially in what looks to be so simple. With this guy coming off, the recapture would require the pawn or to start dropping the corner rook. So when the pawn was used, this is one very sharp position for both sides. This guy on the queen side is hanging and if Lila wants him, she could have very easily get rid of him. If you want this knight out of the way, and I'm talking about the knight on f6, this rook from the king side needs to move out just to be able to expose an otherwise easily escapable rook. Stockfisherman was something very daring. He attacked the rook. His rook repositioned here to chase after this bishop. And what follows next is one of them non-human moves. Not bishop b2, and not bishop takes knight on f6. This is what Stockfish does. Is it a blunder? Who knows? It looks like one. I'm not sounding anything yet. With this bishop removing this guy with a check, king b1 forced that to this very bishop to return to where he came from, just to be able to protect this knight on f6. Knight b3, very strategic move. Bishop c6, and this bishop moved by Stockfish, and this is how Lila responds. She returns the rook to attack the knight. It's not really a very attacking move, as this knight is fully protected 
by this pressure when you five. At this point, Stockfish evaluates his position as totally winning, and Lila is looking at a score that is in favor of Stockfish, but it is marginal. Using the complexity of this position, Stockfish positions the knight to this outpost that is always going to be protected by the bishop on d3. The evils are getting worse with each and gradual move. Lila has a very bad knight parked on the rim. His bishop on c6 is additionally not doing much because of the pawn on d5. And if one site looks way stronger, it has to be self. There are many ideas here, but this game is weird. If Lila loses, I need to go back at the history of Super Finals just to be able to confirm if any engine had lost the game as early as round two. Game one, by the way, was drawn in Stockfish 14, the updated version that was made only two weeks ago. Just some very positive signs. Stockfish 14, in the Super Final is brand new. Game number one was the first game Stockfish 14 plays, and this one today is his second game. In either way, Lila is not looking good with this position. The Rook on G5 needs to go, and Lila on this very position has just spent another 14 minutes only to come up with this challenge. And even here, Stockfish finds a novelty. Can anyone try and figure out a move that will not be looking at rook takes rook on g5? Stockfish steers his bishop against the rook. This rook backs off. And here comes a truly monstrous move by Stockfish. that is just about to create chaos. It was this knight repositioning into c5. I wanted to say this is a move from hell. We can't use these types of words. What Leela did was hopeless. She moved on with this guy, but who or what is looking at a pawn in this very situation? Rookie one, the strategy Stockfish is using is to get Leela to run out of moves. We have seen this tactic earlier. When engines find a gap, they will use it to take full control. Rook d8 is what Leela went for, and Stockfish doesn't even need to do much. Every single piece down to the very last pawn is perfectly positioned. So don't be surprised to see this king start walking. And he does. A move that Stockfish just committed to. If you have any ideas how Lila should react, this will be a good time to tell. If the idea is to get this rook to return to a8, king b3 and step by step, with everything held constant, before you know it, this king will make it all the way to the other side. The difference in the elos of these two engines is negligible, but Stockfish is way too powerful, it seems. What does rook d8 do? It may be able to free up the knight from f6, And let's forget we said this. Lila just placed a rook here, and this is what I'm talking about. She's a sitting duck, and what a way to suffer defeat. And this is the most likely outcome of game two of 100. King b2 was also surprising. Why king b2 now and waste the tempo? This might be a way of saying stockfish is absolutely nothing to fear or worry about. I really dislike covering games like this one in particular because it, wouldn't, it does not give me any pleasure showing the moves without analyzing them in any depth. So let's see if I can make it up in what is to follow. Lila can create something in this situation. She got the bishop to back off and with Stockfish having left this rook standing in, for as long as needed. This was the time to reposition here and create this sort of attack. Bishop d6 retaliating, Stockfish retreats here, and finally 
with the Knight on f6 in a way freed up, he really had to go somewhere. Let us not ignore the Knight on a6 is fully covering his twin brother. So if you leave this Knight in on f6, he will be removed. If Knight d7, this will be disastrous. Take with a check. The rook needs to take, but allow this nifty knight takes check. And once you realize the king has nowhere to go, this is what a checkmate is all about. And let's hear it. Okay, checkmate. Coming back for this very reason, the knight came here. He was then removed, and when Lina recaptured, if you take with the rook, this again backfires. Allow bishop c6, and if the rook backs off to this outpost, not only this knight comes into the game, but something will be lost here. Rook d2 will drop this pawn, and should you retaliate, when you get this attack in, takes, takes, and Leela is a site that will be winning. So coming back, stockfish, use the knight to capture, at the same time chases after this bishop. It should be seven, but to this feather threat, and only because of the mate on h7, the knight was removed. And when the bishop came off, the knight escaped here. So now we have, in a way, an automatic attack on the bishop. Bishop f6, which is the two moves in one to cover for the pawn, led to the knight to create a brand new attack. You can easily go for this avenue of play, and should the knight return to hunt after this bishop, you may want to challenge the rook. If rook a8, before this knight goes anywhere, but if you slip in this check, king g7, knight b4, and south should be more than fine. Coming back, stockfish did this differently. No rook e7, but rook d2. I'm having difficulty in spotting the tactic, but let's see what Stockfish intends to do. Knight back to the rim, and here's another move very hard to figure out. It was this lift to the fourth. Obviously Stockfish is encouraging Lila to trade the knight to the bishop, and this is exactly what happened here. And the reason for this was for Lila to create this type of attack. It was a bad choice of move, given that this guy on h3 is easily protected. Rook d3 would be a blunder due to this, but because you can eliminate this guy from h4, this is what Stockfish does. At the same time, this guy on h3 is also saved. Rook c6 going after the knight. And this is what happens. Now is a nice and very easy simple tactic. Can anyone work out this rook move to the back rank? When the knight came off, Stockfish initiated this check, and with the rook stepping in to block, the engine took with a check. The rook disappeared, and as a result of this action, Stockfish eliminates this bishop with a follow-up check. King to the rim, and this, what you see here, should now be easy peasy. Stockfish went for it. With this guy now departing, the pawn difference is what an engine can need sometimes. And check this one out. No rookie four, but king c3. Rook c6, king b4, we have a check, the rook is pursued, and this guy on c4 walks. There is nothing to stop him unless you surrender the rook. Rook b3, and Stockfish no longer cares about this guy on the rim. Funny enough, Lila doesn't even bother with this, with this little soldier. She redirected the rook towards this guy. The rook came under fire, and with him finding the very first, Stockfish backs off the rook, to the center of the board. The main idea now is to push all the way to promotion. Lila slipped in this check, 
Stockfish gets the king to the rim, and with Lilla trying it again, this was really hopeless. King b5 resulting now to the attack on the rook, but with Stockfish placing this rook right into c4, it's all very clear, or clear to most of us, how this one is going to end. In with a check led to this blockade, Lila returns the rook here, but again it was hopeless. With Stockfish pushing on, it is surprising that no mate is showing. An endgame like this, with an open board, and you should be able to see well beyond any human, and yet in this position, no mate is established. King g6 led to the king to push on. Lila gets the king to move west, but with this guy walking, neither engine is able to spot her mate, but we know there is one. And just feel it. If not in 15, 20 or 25 moves. King e5, king b7, and Lila, surprisingly enough, is like a child, an infant, not knowing what to do. She comes back with a king, and this was the moment Stockfish is able to lock in a checkmate. Right now, we have a mate in 17, which also means if Lila finds the best responses, it will take 17 moves from this point to the very end. I have no idea why Stockfish does not promote the engine delivered this check, but it appears this move by Stockfish is one in the wrong direction. Why? Well, that mate he locked in now has gone. And once again, Lila messes up here. By this king move, that mate is back. And now what we witness is a checkmate in 15. We stockfish bring out a brand new queen. This is so weird, even from an engine that is in the final. Who or what will not surrender the rocks to get rid of the queen? Apparently Leela. This is an absolute blunder. And with blunders, this is what you get to hear. With a mate in 14, when Leela opted for this rather odd response, that mate in 14 has now reduced to only four. How on earth is this at all possible? In with a check, the king found the edge, another check appeared, and with the king finding the seventh, after this check and king I chide, this is how Stockfish ends the game. And let's hear it, let's say for the last time today, because there may be another occasion where we can bring up another mate. I think this is a checkmate. Eh? If you believe in conspiracies, this game we just experienced certainly adds to the mystery. Why would an engine like Leela and Stockfish, and especially Stockfish, not able to find that mate in 17 when there was one? If remote at this point, rather than giving a check, when the queens come off, king e5, h4, f4, h5, f3, this move. And if you're counting, this should all be done in 11. King f6, rook b6 check. King f7, another check. King e6, h7. F2, and this should now be a mating eight. Can you queen? You can, but there is a faster way. Rook b1, king d5, queen here. Okay, queen two, remove the queen. If we're still counting, this should be a mating five moves only. King c5, queen c3, King d5, rook f4, and after king e6, and what? This queen moved to d4. There is a mate in one, king e7, and this is all she wrote. Let's hear it just to confirm, and this is how Stockfish could have ended the game in 17 when the opportunity presented itself. Okay, checkmate. 
The Mate in 17 should be a walk in the park really for any decent engine. Not only stockfish misses here, particularly when tons of RAM and many, many cores are used. Giving stockfish have plenty of time too. This has to be total mystery. Also, what Lila did was totally unexpected, and yet we've seen some very weird ending. Okay, we have first blood in round two of 100. It's unusual, but is it also rare? There is one way to find out. Let us check in season 20. And we have two consecutive wins in round five and round six. In season 19, I'm talking about super final. We have again two wins, both in rounds five and six respectively, using the Steinich in the French. In season 18, we saw two wins as early as round three and four. In season 17, and I'm just checking it right now, I'm always talking about the super final. Once again, we witness two consecutive wins in rounds three and four respectively. And you know what? We have a pattern here, clear pattern, but is it evidence to anything? This will need further study, but for now, coming back to today's game, I have a very early win, but if any conspiracy theory is to hold, we will need to see another consecutive win in the next round. Unfortunately, this game today will be brought out at least two days after it had ended as there is other stuff waiting in the queue. I need to get at least one game out before this one. Given the speed in which these games go, a super final will be well into its 20s, if not 30s, by the time this game is out. Only time will tell what happens next. Your chess puzzle are here, and you know the drill. Safety always first. Thank <laughs> you.